So let me confess something. I have never in my engineering life built a service that got 10,000 requests per second or 100,000 requests per second on um, these very, very big internet scale numbers. But I got a question today from someone asking how the concurrency of an isolate-based platform like Cloudflare Workers compares to something like Lambda or Lambda at Edge, a more traditional serverless platform that's based on processes and containers. And I thought there's a lot of theory that we could talk about, about how it will work isolates are lighter weight and start up faster, but it would be more fun to actually test it. So I'm going to write some code that will get 100,000 requests per second, hopefully, right now. And I'm going to create my worker. And then this worker right now just returns the words, hello world, which is admittedly cool. But of course, I could do this with a CDN and returning some file or something. So I want to add some kind of um, dynamic to it, something that proves that this is really code that's running in response to every request. And so I think I'm just going to make a... Um, random number and I'm gonna make it a nice and big number if you've never seen that technique for generating a random number it's super convenient and I'm gonna add it on to the end of my lovely hello world string And so we can give this a run, and I should get random numbers printed here every single time. And so my worker is entirely done. My code is written. There's no configuration or anything I have to do. Um, I am going to save it. And I could do all of this on a workers.dev, like free Cloudflare subdomain thing, but I don't want to make a million load test requests against something like that. So I'm going to actually deploy it. I'm going to pop over to isolates.org, this is a website. And I'm going to go into workers and I'm going to add a route. I'm going to say isolates.org slash video test. And I'm going to go down. I hope that's the name of the worker that I just made. I didn't give it a good name, which would have been pretty smart. And it'll take five seconds or maybe 20 seconds for this to deploy all the way around the world. But I'll give it a try. I'm going to copy paste it into my browser. And you can't quite see it because of where the window is, but there it is. So we have these random numbers showing up. And if I fire up the dev console, I can get an idea of what the performance of this is. Um, there's no cold starts or anything like that with an isolate-based runtime. So I'm seeing 30 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, 31, 32, 35. These numbers definitely between 30 and 40. And that really represents how long the isolate takes to run, maybe to get this cold start. I have no idea. It happens so fast, it's, it's really hard to see with an isolate. And then also how long it takes for the request to move from Austin, Texas, where I'm sitting right now, to wherever the closest, uh, in this case, Cloudflare data center is. I could run a similar test probably with a lot of other platforms and get really, really great results like this. It's awesome. But obviously, that's not what I am here for. I'm not here to run a, a few tests. I'm here to run a lot of tests. I'm going to pop over to a tool called Loader. Loader is a tool built by SendGrid Labs that runs a lot of load tests. And I've demonstrated to them that I actually own this website already because otherwise they probably wouldn't let me run this test. No one wants to, anyone to use this for a denial of service attack. But I have proven that I, that I own this website. And I've asked them to run a test that maintains client load. What that means is every time a request comes in, it'll get served, it'll respond to Loader, and then Loader will start a new one. So it'll keep firing requests at my service to try to maintain this number. 10,000 requests per second. Actually, sorry, 10,000 concurrent requests. We're going to look at the data after this runs and we're going to see how many requests per second it actually ends up doing. It's probably going to be a lot more than that because each of these requests only take 30 or 40 milliseconds. So I'm going to put in my path that I gave it, video test isolates.org, and I'm pretty sure that's all I have to do. It should just take about 15 seconds for this test to run. Already we see the results starting to come in and it's in the time that I've been talking, it's already ran 500,000 tests, which is pretty incredible. You see this line going up like crazy. We're at seven. Wow. Okay. 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 clients per second. And if we look at the average time, it, it pretty much averages to exactly what I saw on my computer. It starts to level off here at about 46 milliseconds. So going from, oh, actually, we look at the average over here on the left. 
it looks like it's 23 milliseconds. So it's better than the performance that I got on my local computer. And that's not shocking. Um, Cloudflare doesn't have a data center in Austin, Texas. It has ones in other areas of Texas. So it's not shocking that Loader was able to get even better performance than I could. What is amazing is I just ran 1.29 million tests against a function I wrote in seven seconds. And every single one of them succeeded. 0400, 0500, zero timeouts, zero network errors. Uh, everything happened in under a second. But when we look at the distribution, and here again is, wow, I did hit it. I wrote, a, I wrote code that runs 100,000 times per second. That's really cool. Okay. Um, when I look at the distribution, I see this, I mean, it doesn't even look like a bell curve, right? It's like entirely on the left-hand side. Um, 30% of the requests happened in under 16 milliseconds, which is um, a blink of an eye is about 200 milliseconds. So that's more than 10 times faster than the blink of an eye, unbelievably fast. And then more than 50%, I think, if we add those numbers up, happened in under 32 milliseconds, and that's a frame of video. So like 30 at 30 frames per second, one frame is 32 milliseconds. And so a single frame of video is faster than that. And then virtually every request I can see here looks like 77 plus 11 percent, um, a, a good 90 percent of all the requests finished under the 64 millisecond barrier. And that's where you even start to think about the speed of, of performance over the internet. It's just really inconceivable to think of things being much faster than this over the internet. And we got, I think, 99 percent, it looks like, pretty close to 99 percent of the requests in under 100 milliseconds. And this is running a really, really, really amazing number of requests per second spiking up so quickly. This is the equivalent probably of me, you know, deploying this code onto one of the most popular websites on earth and getting this ability for it to scale up instantly with no errors. So that is the answer to my uh, question. That is the answer of how well isolates scale. This is obviously something that you can and should test with something like Lambda Edge, but what you're going to find is a lot of these requests are going to get cold starts. It's going to need to spin up a lot of instances. We were running something like um, 9,000 clients per second. So that means 9,000 redundant copies of this Lambda would have to be started. And each one is going to get a cold start. And when you go to deploy a change, they're all going to get another cold start. And when you think about deploying it around the world, you're getting clients from all over different places of the world that are getting these half second or longer delays to start running your code and get a response to their request. So it's really unbelievable what a difference isolates make, how much faster things can start when the overhead is so much lower than having to start up a whole containerized process. Give it a try yourself. Build something. It doesn't take that long.